Hello and welcome to Magathea Builder of Worlds. This was going to be a Necromunda scenery build um, and it's definitely going to be one I'm going to work on in the next few weeks. I've got a lot of actual real proper work coming up in the next two or three weeks so I'm not sure how much I'm going to get completed. But right now I'm appealing to you, my viewers, subscribers and uh, anybody else who picks this up and if you haven't subscribed why the hell not? Subscribe now otherwise you're going to miss the results. But I need your help. This was the last piece of scenery I built. This is tile number four for my underhive project, which is going to be originally nine tiles and then extended to 16. So I'm building a settlement and a large playing area. Um, and it's going to be a place called Pier Town, set on the sump. Pier Town first originated in 1995 and 96 when three of us who work for Games Workshop in South End of Lakeside had concurrently running campaigns in Peertown, Pitsy and Thor's Rock. Actually, Peertown wasn't my uh, location, but I've stolen it off Darren, I'm sure he won't mind. What I need is your help to decide what my next modelling project is going to be, because I've actually got three ideas. When I make a model, one of these bits of terrain, I like to theme it, and I like to get an idea of what it's going to be, and I like a narrative to build out of that single piece of terrain. That's going to be difficult for 16 pieces of terrain eventually. In fact, some of them... I'm going to do all at the same time because I'm going to build four feet of seafront with piers and the sump are probably all in one go. That won't be four separate videos, that may only be, well, it won't be four separate tiles, that might be two separate tiles, probably only two videos, I'll build it all at the same time. But I'm stuck at a minute, I've got three potential ideas for the next tile and what I need you to do please is watch the rest of this video and then leave comments down below here or comment on one of the posts on one of the multitude of Facebook groups I'm going to post this on, or on my Magathea Builder Worlds Facebook page. Tell me which one you think I ought to build next. Give me some ideas, help me out what the character of these things should be. So check out this video, leave comments, subscribe, and then that way you'll see what happens next. First of all, Whilst digging through the cack last time, whilst making my mechs workshop, I came across this. There we are. There it is. Look at that lovely bit of gear, you lovely boy. Any newbies to workshop might not recognise that, but quite a lot of you people who are watching this are old school gamers and you know damn well what that is because you know full on that this is an original late 1980s Land Raider. Um, it's a bit knackered now, to be quite honest. Check that out. Lost the top. Um, this I never got used as far as I was concerned with Space Marines. This was part of my Orc Blood Axe army and it had all sorts of conversions done to it at one point or another. It's now in a bit of a sorry state. However, the inside of it is still in quite good nick. It's one of the first models that Workshop did an interior design for. It was a very basic interior design, but actually I really quite like this as a house. So almost immediately when I saw this, I decided this could, could become a residence for somebody. It'll make an interesting home piled up with cack, different to the containers. So much so that the, the roof plate I've taken off, I've already built a light holder that could sit in there. This is very rough, but you know, that works really nicely. Look, and I can, light up red inside with an LED. That would look really, really cool as some denizens of the Underhive's residence. Um, this is made with one of my uh, 3D printed button battery holders. Uh, and then I could slot that and an LED in and job done, lights up very nicely. Problem with this one, as going head this time round, is I can't actually decide who should be living in it and if i can't decide who should be living in it i'm not entirely sure that i'm going to get the vibe for this piece of scenery yet um so i could do with your assistance <laughs> in a very cheesy through the keyhole kind of way if you've never seen that show google it who would live in a house like this that was the worst accent i've ever done but there you go um who do you think should be living in this crashed crashed up land raider deserted armored bit of gear I did have a mind of sticking oh, alongside one of these. 
these are very convenient bits of packaging that are exactly 12 inches across and I quite like that being the edge of my seawall. I want to build a sump side settlement because this is going to be pier town and I quite like this being the, the kind of uh, seawall so I'll have the sump on this side and land on this side uh, and I quite fancy this being kind of like butted up against the seawall and then junk piled up maybe around it. Look I've got things like this old uh, knife dispenser that I was going to use as a basis of something and then pile up junk underneath it. But I can't think of who would live there. So I don't think I'm going to do this one today. So uh, unless you can help me out, I need a, a bit of a hand. Right then, next up, I've been saving this for absolutely ages. How about that? That, for those of you who don't know, this is the guts the inside of an old Dyson Hoover. Look at that, I mean, it's just awesome. This shape is just really, really cool. I was keeping this for a long time for a project for work. Now, I know what you're thinking. What the hell does this guy do for a living? Well, actually, I'm a creative writing consultant. I go into schools all over England and give kids stories to write. And I was thinking about turning this into a science fiction prop. Look, I've got other cack around here that I've also got. Over there is an old heat gun that died and that is being waited, that is waiting to be turned into a sci-fi prop as well. Um, but the fact is in the end is that I've had this for years and I don't think I'm ever going to do the project I was talking about doing with it. So it's fair game. Now, the problem with this, of course, is it's really slick, line, sleek and not at all clunky like Imperial Technology is. So it's going to need quite a lot of work, but it, there's so many cool shapes on it. Um, I don't know whether to cut this mesh out and see the stuff inside. I could build up things around the outside. I've even toyed with using one of these. This, <laughs> you know when you can't collect suitable gunk? This is from Wallace and Gromit. Check it out. Um, this has, used to have a mug on it. In fact, I might go and find a mug at some point. That'll be really cool too. But that's, it's, look, it's all rivet. It's got all rivety bits and round bits. And there's an open bit here which we need kind of like filling up. But that will make quite a nice stand. I obviously need to cover up the bit here that says Wallace and Gromit. You probably can't read that in this light, but... Um, and that could go on there, and I could kind of put this on here. And this will give me height on a model that I haven't really gained yet, and quite a few people have said, you need some taller stuff, and this will be quite cool. I quite like this as some kind of heat sink or some funky piece of, of Imperial technology. You could have some walkways up to it and stuff around, and that could be really cool. So that might be my next model what do you think chuck me some ideas let's see what we can do with it this is um the start potential model number three check that baby out okay so this um brushed steel ikea light lamp there was a bit that stuck in the top and had all these spaghetti of lights that came out of it. But we dumped this some time ago and it's been sat in my garage for a little while. And again, I think this is quite a neat thing. Um, it's uh, nearly 12 inches tall. So three or four layers at least, which is quite neat. And of course, it's got potential to build on the top and go higher. Um, what I'd probably need to do from a storage point of view is make something that slotted in the top and could be taken off easily because it'll be a pain in the neck. This could be... Um, the basis for my enforcers sector house or it could be um, some kind of tower that I build shanty dwellings around and different layers and bits and pieces I could I've got lots of other things I've got workshop plasma malarkey type stuff you know the big Let's see what else I can find I can't remember the names of any of these fucking things because they're Warhammer 40k and They've got stupid names that I really can't remember. There you go. What's that? What's that? That is a Promethean Forge. Is that Promethean Forge? No, it's not Promethean Forge. Here we go. So I've got this kind of stuff that can easily blend in with it. Put that together, have these kind of towery bits around it and have walkways and things. But I'm really not sure. So I could really do with your help. Um, help me out.
thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video, which is going to be where we start the next tile project when I build one of the three things that I've got in mind.